whole field that we exist in, the whole realm is the program now. You can imagine that smell of burning wires, a concept of in a dream and you you kind of understand that something smells we and and we have a term for this back to the you know Trojan horse back into older times. I think this starts to present something really magical, Randy, but also something very scary because we're being subdued here. We're being trapped here. We are somehow in a purgatory type situation. This is Off Planet Radio. Welcome to another dimension. A dimension of insight. A dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits. There are no boundaries. This is Off Planet Radio. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio. In the uh, year of our gods, 2023, it's 2023 already, and uh, time looping and all the things that go into the preponderance of the present period of time that we're in, ah, time is, can be your friend, it can be your enemy. Welcome back. I am... Randy Moggins, and I do have a guest with me on the lines. My guest today comes to us from the West Coast of the United States. She is my counterpart in so many ways, uh, host of um, several shows, um, the um, Nox Mente Obelisk Juggernaut with uh, friend Jerry, and of course, the Cosmic Salon's own niche. We welcome back to the show. Welcome back, darling. Hi, Randy Moggins. It's been so long, as we were saying right before we started this. I can't even recall. Last I know, <laughs> and we're actually on my side. I gotta, I, I get to, I get to produce this time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm thrilled to be back, and people have been asking me when we were going to do this again. Where we're at right now in time is interesting because it's unfolding, it's unpacking so rapidly, and it's um, it's kind of soft around the edges. It's uh, plasticky and synthetic feeling. I, you know, I don't know where you're at in all of this or what you're sensing, but uh, my probing out into the corridors is that. Um, this is, you know, we talked about the eye of the needle and the compression cycle. And it's just, um, this feels ominous in a very different way. We're like post-apocalyptic in some sense in terms of, well, post, you know, the thing. Yes. And um, apparently we're waking up from the malaise, but are we really? I'm, I don't know. Well, that's the, that's the real thing here, Randy. I think that we are starting to collectively come into focus a little bit. It takes time cognitively to come into focus, like waking up every day until you get into it, you the You may day. wake up and feel and chipper right it's away. It's coming out of the liminal states. It's coming happens. into the light happening behind your eye. What's being shown to you in the room, breathing the air from coming up out of this state and then sitting up and having the circulation move around, releasing the first waters of the day. Mm. There's a whole bunch here, Randy, at play. Yeah, yeah, there is. And that's the, the you know, the morning after the night. And the journeys through night, you know, we always wind up talking about this because it's really, you know, it's really the sort of the centerpiece of what you do. And it's a lot of what I've explored over the, the years in this kind of liminal space that we come in and out of uh, as a result of being in a dual consciousness. Um, the dream state, and part of what I wanted to get you on to talk about was... Um, 
what is the the state of the dream world right now? What are you reading? What are you sensing? What are what are you getting as feedback from folks? Oh, this is this is deep territory. We know now for sure it's now out of the realm of dirt corners on the internet and old school dark corners and cafes and the dark end of the bar where everyone was always talking about being interfaced, right? Mm -hmm. So now we know with all the tech that has been being presented to us in the last few years that it was coming and then you start seeing it's at play here and this and now it's just full frontal. And as we have been talking about for a long time, this stuff has already been perfected. And just like this process of waking up into a day, into your day, into this day, yeah. it's it's a it's a process. And there's still more that's coming down the line. But when we start looking at being interfaced in our yeah. dreams cycles where we are supposed to in theory have safe space this is where we move into the magical spaces that inform us about what is going on with our internal psyche our internal worlds sorry about my dog i think somebody's oh, learning our internal wor worlds there is now a new flavor and one of the things that i have been hearing a lot and i personally am noticing is that the the flavor of being interfaced while you are in certain states of consciousness is distinct now i know this from being a lifelong lucid dreamer and playing in these worlds mm -hmm. internally and it does have a digital flavor it really does if you can imagine that smell of burning wires and just kind of put that into a, a concept of what you, that may be if you're in a dream and you you kind of understand that something smells off in mm -hmm, the dream mm -hmm. yeah you know what I'm saying here? I used to talk so, about this in terms of my experiences with the UFOs and how the only thing, way I could describe what I was sensing in terms of olfactory was the smell of burning ozone. Yeah, yes. it, it's, it's, it's hard to describe unless you can latch on to that, but it's, it's very tactile. And yeah, exactly what you're talking about here is how it is engaging us on so many levels that I don't think anybody really outside of perhaps our community really anticipated. Yeah, and see, that's the whole thing is once you can latch onto it, you know it forever. And that's the beauty of it. So it's it's this kind of coming into a knowing of something's different, something's not right, and allowing yourself and your internal system to tell you this in a deeper way. So the moment the thought comes into your into your being, then you're like, okay, I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to start making this a marker instead of, oh, it's nothing. Remember that left brain always want if it can't place it, it's just going to throw mm -hmm. it to the side, scrap. So there's this interfacing that's going on in our dreams and they're talking about it along with just in our waking state, which is conceptually is our dream in experience, mm -hmm. dream in <laughs> I keep saying I'm separating these words these days. And so the problem with this is we are having algorithmic experiences that are not from our natural system. They're being uh, we're being manipulated through this kind of wave formation and our brains are are being tricked into thinking we're having an organic experience when we're actually being entrained and moved through processes. Now, this should sound familiar to anyone that's been through programs, right, Randy? Right, right. Yes. This is this is like at play all the time. And so now they can do it remotely. They can do it in a whole city. They can they can triangulate onto a single person, onto an animal. And this is 
how the seeding is happening right now. And it's creating a lot of erratic behavior in our waking lives. And not only that, a lot of uh, misinterpretation through directed technology in the way people perceive waking reality. So dreaming reality is is absolutely being intercepted and that space is being very controlled and we can get maybe into that later. But what I wanted to bring this into is that by hijacking our internal space while we're in states of liminal consciousness, we are being programmed for the day ahead and the day ahead of that. So that say something is going to get laid out, say something that looks like a modern day vernacular, a false flag. Seeding has to be at play here. So somebody seeds something without really realizing it. It's that post they made on Twitter or it's this um, action they took over here with a a, taking a picture of something sort of a precognitive mm-hmm. a, but precognitive setup for the play and so all the pieces get put together slowly over time to build something that will look organically done later so or that will be a sleight of hand optically to people looking on a horrible incident and so the seeding is now out of the programs, the whole field that we exist in, the whole realm is the program now. It's not just some of us. It's not just a few of us. It's not just selective, uh, a selective process. It's literally everyone and no one is excluded from this. And the ones, those of us that are aware this is happening, that we've been interfaced, that we have been, uh, that we are being traumatized in a way that is creating certain algorithmic predictable outcomes to precede, and I mean seed, S-E-E-D, also preceding, to yeah. precede events in, say, you want to set up something nasty for six months out, then the groundwork gets laid. And so it looks as organic as possible when the event goes down. Now, this is what is interesting is that they can get massive amounts of people to play this without even realizing it. That's why it's so much easier for me now looking at it to see like, oh, okay, you know, we get these narratives. This person went off the deep end, the old school ones, and they start looking at their social media and they, you know, and we start see we, you and I and people like us can look and go, this is totally crazy. How are people buying this? But the collective is in a state of dreaming right now. Most people are. Most people do not realize that they are actually in a comatose state, not just cyclical, but in in general, everyone is absolutely asleep. And this is not the colloquialism we're talking about that brought on the whole woke culture. This is actually a literal thing that's going on. And while everyone is at sleep and being programmed and manipulated to going along and, and seeding the reality to come forward. Um, and this is all in subtle things. This is all in the subtle world. The devil's in the details. This is not broad strokes. They are starting to give us this idea of being swimming. Let's put it this way. Swimming in a pool of radiation. We are being irradiated. Yeah, yeah. We're in radiation so deep that everyone is having physical symptoms mm-hmm. and the seeding of the narrative in the collective has been such that everyone thinks it's this thing that they brought about. It's this sickness or it's it's this specific thing. And of course, plug in Hegelian dial, you know, the Hegelian model and all this. But all along what we needed to get to was this moment of open rule, which we are definitely in. I think most people can see this. However, how do we discern what is human and what is not human 
when everything is presenting as human in a human form. And this all goes back to how long have we been getting interfaced through our unconscious, our psyche, through the the dreaming process, and how many people are actually aware, again, of what that smell is, what that feel is, how many people have normalized what should not be normalized, how many people have pocketed uh, and bought and sold and pocketed the narrative that was preceded for them. And this starts to play out in the modern day version of Tavistock. Yeah. This when Tavistock, you know, became it, it faded into this. It's a fader. We're fading into the new world. We are now in the new world, Randy, and that's why we have a new sun. That's why we're having the new fourth state of water and and the whole idea of what oil really is and the whole idea of what what it takes to be healthy what it takes for us to be healthy, the idea of what is germs, what is germ warfare, what is fusion, what is colliding particles. These things are all at play. This is a big clockwork the way I see it. And it started in our dream space. Harnessing the collective energy of the dream space. There's almost, you know, there's almost nothing that's inconceivable in dream space. And and we know that that's where a lot of our reality is woven, that we bring things forward from that unconscious realm into the physical far more than we actually realize. The average person has no concept of their ability to manifest material reality. And the scary thing is that for the masses, this is a harnessing of an unconscious power, which isn't even accessible to, we'll say, the average person. And the harnessing of those collective energies not only means that they are slave, enslaved into a system, But it also means that what is being pulled through the system is the unconscious, subconscious, I want to say almost like nightmare scenarios collectively dreamed by the masses who do not control their own unconscious process. That was wordy, sorry. Um, If you can get what I'm saying. In other words, the real key to this isn't whether we are being entrained or whether we're being pulled into this collective dream harnessing, but that we're aware of it and know how to break through it. This goes in, obviously, to the, the whole concept of, of um, lucid dreaming and being a trained dreamer. Well, and, and see this, so let's take this deeper. Um, what what are we doing when we have that the zinc spark right the spark of life in the womb what what is what's going on for us in that space mm. what is happening in the womb we are in a state of active dreaming it 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 has that flavor to it and when we are put into a comatose state this is a similar state the brain somehow processes it in the same way now it can be more terrifying obviously if if you are aware if you are awake and aware and you realize that something is going on outside this space you're in so conceptually yeah. dream or the womb which is where i want to go and uh and the stuff that's going on outside now this this becomes separate from from say the relationship with the mother the mother is part of you when you're in the womb you right. are part of the mother and so this is all kind of one symbiotic system and and we understand all this so you you are moving through the cellular experience that the mother is and so it's easy if you're becoming conscious and aware of this dream space as a womb 
as a natural simulacrum, the organic, the real deal. And then you can discern from that state of boundaries that is you in the womb of the mother, what is outside of the mother? What are you hearing outside of that space? And this is this This brings in very provocative ideas of Plato's cave, for example. Mm -hmm. This brings in very provocative ideas of uh, where I was trying to take this earlier with the coma thing, with being comatose and the idea of being awake but asleep. And if we think about how we project our mental lives into the world of mental lives in what we conceive of as the collective reality bias, the realm of reality, of tangible reality. And yet we are in the womb or we are in a comatose state or we are in a dream within a dream and yet lucid, awake, aware. How do we discern some of these differences if say you are in a coma and you are in an induced coma and you have no control like say sleep paralysis Mm -hmm. in 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 awakening you can't move but you are somehow buoyant you can hear but you can't be heard etc and so The manipulation factor here is high and we know that when you manipulate organic systems such as we are, that certain things happen in a biochemical way within our body, not just our brain. You know, the whole endocrine system is very important here. All our systems are important, but there's not enough attention that's brought to the endocrine system and more attention needs to be brought to uh, the pituitary gland rather than the pineal. Pineal. Yeah, They work together, but you have to have them uh, in tandem. So they both need to be healthy. They both you need to be seated in to that. And as the world around you is being presented through this state of buoyancy in a space of either organic containment, the womb, or induced containment, a comatose state, and projecting outward into the sea of others, projecting outward that are creating realities that feel tangible and if you are hooked in again remember you are the mother but you are not the mother so if the mother is cut the 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 child inside has it feels the pain the mother feels Mm -hmm. but the child is not actually damaged the mother is damaged and this is the concept i'd like to make very clear here because i think this is actually what's going on with this experience of reality and so when we talk about what's real and why and simulacrum and sim theory and all that stuff i think it's something we need to embed in something tangible and if people can get this concept then you will start to see how it unfolds into the way you're walking the world out here but are we actually out here and there's another thing as i was bringing in earlier with this idea of radiation why are we collectively having radio radioactive sicknesses and experiences everyone i know i look at right now including myself yeah. seems to be suffering from radio radio waves radio electronic waves radiation of some sort and isn't it funny how that started with this white sun subtly but it's pulsating it the world before the world of you and i with the yeah. yellow sun was a different world it's a different space we are in a new space did we get trapped here collectively are we collectively in an induced coma and if we are randy 
where are we and what is housing us that can be manipulated to make this feel as real as it ever did. I, the mother gets cut and then I have that experience in the womb and because the mother is experiencing a cut and bleeding, I tap into her experience, her cellular experience, her nerve experience, her experience of pain and the experience of life force spilling out of her. And it's going to look and feel and seem as real as it is for the mother. And this is a web of weird. And I postulate that this is what is going on, Randy. If I'm following where you're going here, can we extend the the analog with the mother as being Gaia, Terra, the Earth? Yes. What is happening? Because we both are and are not connected to the planet. From the state of physicality, we are creatures born of the materium, which is the earth. It's, you know, this is, this is the, the organic matrix. But if, and you know, this, this really clicked when you talked about the white sun, because I'm trying to remember, when did it change? Was it a subtle change or did we just not notice the... Uh, this was kind of one of the revelations I had when we had the great eclipse in 2017 was what I saw in the sky, the great wheel and how basically what you would call timelines or temporal platforms were visually depicted as me as rails kind of shifting the way you would shift trains in a, in a yard. And we shifted from one line to another and it was that was the beginning then of where we are in this current what to even call it this 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 current situation that we're all in that was sort of the beginning of it in in my mind but that's very distinct and yet i'm trying to remember the halcyon days of the yellow red sun and i don't know it's almost like i put a lot of thought on i put a lot of thought into this and i started to dig into the world of what do we know and and this is the problem do we know what we know but what can we hold on to and uh, you know i went back i'm like when did cern and that's the biggest collider that we know of because we know there are other colliders out there. But yeah. when did that particular one go active? And it's like 2007 and eight is is the time frame. And you can just go to the website and it gives you that information when they started colliding. And I started to ponder the idea of, OK, so if that happened and we're talking God particle here, Higgs, you know, the, all this stuff. Well, you know, the, the terminology should always be part of the pole star that guides us with so looking at the language, yeah. how the language is being used. So when we're calling something a God particle, we need to, of course, take notice. And all of us did. And so it seems to me that that may be when we first started to have this switch over. I cannot clearly recall it either. And I love the analogy of the train and the, um, how, how, for anyone, this might be too old school for some people, but you know, those, they'd switch those lines over and the tracks would switch mm -hmm. over and you're on a new, you know, on a new track. And so this, this seems to me like kind of, ground zero for when the shifting of the light occurred. And when we're thinking about the sun, we absolutely need to think in terms of light. And light is what? Frequency. Frequency. And yeah. what are we now learning about light? We're learning that light, not only is it life, but light through Li-Fi technology, light is, is in and of itself 
so powerful that it can track and monitor us, that they can use it in te- in modern technology around us. Again, what's real, what's not, where are we, when are we? Well, that- you know, people forget now that long before they instituted what we know of is the modern um, modalities, 4G, 5G, and now 5G, 6G, they had sort of wrapped us into fiber optic cables. You know, that was that was the yeah. great promise in the 1990s and in, in the early 2000s. And, you know, when I think about this, you're, you're dating on CERN. My, my remembrance is that clearly there was a demarcation sometime between the 19, the late 1990s and the early 2000s. That's when it started to feel false. That's when it started to feel a shift. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, for real, that is that is also for me when I noticed that there's something different. And I th- I've thought about that and I've, I've looked at it. I've gone back and I've tried to explore my ideas of memories and explore collective pop culture and and hone in on that because what we had we had the whole y2k thing going Mm. on we had this idea of a reset it's from one century to another this is a big deal when we're thinking about clocks passages doorways portals of time and then you know our our constant ponders on time and the tape of time and time becomes very associated with light and light has become the big story now where we are because you don't actually need those fiber optics optics anymore but looking back at fiber optics remember how they went to all the trouble to lay them throughout the waterways the oceans and seas Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought I, back in the day, I just I was trying to conceptualize that. Like I was constantly wondering about things chewing on them. And, I, you know, I had these like, what is the reality of that? How how does that age? How how does that work when we're looking at longevity and say something gets you know, what about trollers? You know, fishermen, you know, there's like well, so not many. Not only that, but. Think about this. Why would you go to the expense and trouble of doing that in the era of satellites and the pro- great promises of satellites? Yes. And then, you know, you look at the topology of the Internet, and this is you can go on the public Internet and see the nervous system, the transoceanic um, cabling systems that are the backplanes intercontinental for for what we call the Internet. Yes. Um, Are those satellites really there to do that? You know, what is the question is, what the hell are they doing? I mean, we, we know they're using them for communications, but it seems to me like we were wrapped, and this goes back to the early 20th century when we began the electrification of the planet. And what happened in that time was not dissimilar to what happened to us a hundred years later, uh, when they began to roll out, hot, you know, the, the millimeter wave bands that we associate with five and six G, is that we had a plague. We had the what the Spanish flu around that time, and Rudolf Steiner wrote about this, about the fact that these were the effects of basically, you know, electrical magnetic energies that were being pushed out in, into the ether. And so, you know, after a while you're going, how many layers of information technology do we need? And each one of these has a correspondent to, I think, the human body. When you start to think about it and you think about the electrification, what are they building? They're building a grid work around Indeed. us and around mother. Yes. 
And see, when we look back, back there, whatever that is, let's look at the 69 when apparently we're able to talk from Earth via satellite to the moon. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, I just want to put that out there and some, you know, I mean, it, it's what has been preceded in this state of reality. And are we really collectively dreaming the same dream? When you look at the breakdown now of ideas, of cultures, of uh, everything in 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 the outer world, when we're looking at the fact that culture in and of itself is cannibalizing itself, it is mm-hmm. consuming its past ideas and bringing them into new ways. Now we've seen this through pop culture for a long time. You go and you look at the 1970s, which were mirroring the 1920s, those same silhouettes. We can take back that and go to like 1790s. There's a whole bunch of stuff that just conceptually links back into whatever time is. But as we're moving forward, the actual craftsmanship is deteriorating. Deteriorating. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What you know, we need to question this, and there are people questioning this with the whole Tartaria thing and all that. This, this is a serious line of query. How is this possible if we're more advanced? And and then there's this whole idea of the things in the water. You know, I grew up, Randy, in the world where human Homo sapiens sapien was the apex consciousness and sentience on the planet and and you know when i was young they didn't even recognize things like dogs as having souls Mm -hmm. and so that i mean do you remember when the the pope said finally dogs have souls i mean it was a big deal in the realm of course the gatekeepers over there but now here we are where we can look at say the brain of a sperm whale and look at how much more complex how much larger how their language appears to be through modern investigation way more in depth than ours through their clicking and uh, their abilities period point blank are just superior to ours i don't care what anyone says and the the people out there are presenting this information now. I've just been posting about it. So where I want to get back to is, is it possible? Is it possible that this is already a place that is not where we want to be? And what I say when I say that, what I mean is as organic humans, and I keep that loose as well, but. We are in a new world and everything in this new space seems to be working against us. We are carbon. Everything is trying, you know, this whole thing, everything's working against us. We're completely being bombarded with more restrictions all across the realm, uh, poisoned by every turn we take with everything. Nothing seems to be logical or sane anymore. And the world has gone mad. So is it not the time to stand up and start asking bigger questions? Isn't it the time now to say, Maybe the old rules that we thought were old rules, the old things that we rested our laurels on, are not correct. We need to adjust in order to figure this situation out. Because what I think is happening is, in a way, a digestion of humans. I think we are being digested in some way, Randy. And I don't know, I don't have the P's and Q's of it. It's straight up woo. And I'm allowing myself this straight up woo to flow because nothing else makes sense. So let's talk about the crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And in this process, I will tell you what I have narrowed all this down to. 
This is Off Planet Radio. Thank you. 